set up before I was, before I pushed the button. There we go. Glad I... Good morning. Good morning. All right, so this recipe today, um, I, this is not fire cider. I think I've done this with you before. This is not fire cider uh, because everyone knows how to make fire cider. And if you don't know how to make fire cider, there are fire cider recipe videos all over the internet. Um, so go, go find a, 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 a fire cider recipe. So I'm not here to talk about fire cider. I'm here to talk about the limitations of fire cider and when you're making fire cider, how to, um, how to modify your making a little bit and do a second step to get the, the meat of fire cider. So fire cider, this is a, a fire cider type product. Fire cider is what we call, depending on how it's made, it's an acetum, which is, uh, good morning, uh, an acetum, which is a vinegar extract, right? So uh, if we're using alcohol for extraction, we're going to call it a tincture. If we're um, using glycerin for extraction, we're going to call it glyceride. When we use vinegar for extraction, we call it an acetum. Acetum from the root word acetic, um, referring to the acetic acid and the fact that it's acidic, right? So an acetum is a vinegar extract. If we are using, so if you make your fire cider with just vinegar, you're making an acetum. If you're making it with uh, vinegar and honey, what are you making? An oxymel. So an oxymel is a combination of vinegar and honey using two solvents both of which extract mostly water soluble compounds, but still they're, they're, great, um, they're great solvents for high. They're great solvents for water soluble compounds and um, they're great preservatives because a low pH um, uh, and a high um, sugar content uh, are both good uh, preservation strategies. So we're um, using the combination either of vinegar or of vinegar and honey to extract constituents. And that is a really common medicine making um, path, right? We'll, we'll do that with a lot of different things. We'll um, look at other recipes for uh, oxymels um, in future classes. But again, this isn't about the making of, of fire cider as an oxymel. We just have to kind of understand what we're working with before we go forward. And I'm so excited if you haven't seen this before. Oh my God, this is the best. Okay, so in fire cider oxymel, have y'all made fire cider before? I haven't. I'm, I'm glad you're doing it. Yes. Oh, great. Yes. Okay. I haven't. I've made yeah. oxymels, but not fire cider. You made oxymels, but fire, not fire cider. Yeah. Do you know? And you just have some last night? Yes, nice. What generally goes in, and you in line, hi Teresa, um, what goes into a fire cider? What's the ingredients? Oh gosh, um, garlic. 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 Onions. Onion. Onion. Horseradish. 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 Cayenne. Cayenne. Absolutely. And then the, the um, Vinegar, yes, and I almost always make mine an oxymel, so mine always has vinegar and honey together, but some people would prefer not to have the sugar in it, so they would make the honey out of it. Yeah, whichever way. Um, yeah, other things you can think of that go into a, a, a fire cider? Let's see, Teresa, what's, you threw pineapple in it? Yeah. Uh, before I said, like, uh, blood oranges. Pineapple, blood oranges, <laughs> absolutely. I've seen hibiscus and pomegranate. In it, ginger right? In ginger is very classically used. Yep, that's one of the common ones. Do you so, use uh, like rosemary or thyme or anything? Many things? people will add rosemary and thyme. Yeah, those are very common. Those are aren't really part of the original recipe. The original recipe is pretty much this right here. Right, but. It is, what we're doing is we're just making medicine using the oxymel, right? This is, a, a, it wasn't, the, the making of oxymels didn't start with fire cider, right? It goes way back. And there have been variations on this, this, this recipe for a long time before it was kind of codified as fire cider. 
Let's see what other people are saying. Uh, oranges and lemons, yes. So citrus is also great to throw in there. Yep. Uh, ginger, citrus, rosemary, thyme, ginger, rosemary, orange. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's another one that is also not kind of canon, um, but um, it's made its way into a lot of recipes in the last like 10 years. And I'm waiting to see it because I haven't seen it from you and I haven't heard it from you. So what Black else? Pepper. Black pepper will often come in, absolutely. Yep. Is it the turmeric? And it's turmeric. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> yes. So turmeric. Um, and that is 10 points for Renee. Uh, yeah. So, and turmeric is often uh, added to it. And turmeric is what I'm on about today. So, hi. hi. Welcome. So, yeah. Uh, so this is your basic recipe. Now people will also throw things like burdock in there and dandelion root. And it's really nice to throw something like nettles in there and horsetail and oat straw. Why would that be? Why would this be a really good medium to put nettles and horse, oat straw and horsetail? Um, dropping in to say, love, oh Dana, Mwah. I love you. Yes, yes, come back and watch the replay. Um, isn't turmeric, ah, and Acadian homestead, you get 10 points too. Um, Marcos, hi Marcos, yes. Mineral solvent, yes, exactly, yes, and 10 more points. Um, uh, minerals, Gina, hi Gina, yeah, exactly. So you've got an opportunity to extract minerals in here. We're mostly looking at pungent principles, right? We're mostly looking at the aromatics. That's what a lot of these have in common, right? The garlic and onion, horseradish, kind. Well, they have pungent principles and they also have sulfur, right? Lots of sulfur in here um, from the garlic and the onion and the horseradish, um, big sulfur compounds in there. Um, so aromatic compounds um, uh, and the, the pungent principles and and sulfur compounds are all gonna be extracted very, very well in there. And if you were to throw in some of the mineral-rich compounds, those would extract very, very well in there also. And that might even modify the pH a little bit, making it better for those people who like, like the concept of fire cider, but it's a bit rough on their gut, right? Throwing the minerals in there would, would kind of help to offset that a little bit, make it a little bit more gentle on their, their gut. Um, um, <laughs> She's winning, yes. Uh, Acadian Homestead is winning. Yes, the... Uh... Okay, so we'll go back and Acadian Homestead hit on the big thing. Turmeric is often used, is added to um, fire ciders. This is what it looks like when you've got your fire cider um, prepped, right? You have your chopped, fresh, we're using fresh veggies, right? So we chop these up fresh. Um, generally, you can use dried, absolutely. You can use dried, but fresh is... is uh, is uh, wonderful to use. Um, particularly if you're gonna do what I'm gonna show you today, you have to use the fresh. So we soak these in the solvents for X amount of time. And uh, you know what X is kind of depends on what your tra uh, training is. This one has been in there for about four months. So it's been hanging out in the refrigerator for a long time until I got to it. This one, I, um, I extracted, but I kept the mark because the mark is whatever we're interested in. And let's go back to that turmeric concept. Turmeric does not extract in water soluble, uh, turmeric isn't water soluble, right? Turmeric has some water soluble compounds in it, right? So we don't want to fall into the trap of seeing some of the chemistry of plants as being the whole of the plant, right? Plant chemistry is infinitely complex and we only know a little bit about it. But when we know a pretty good amount about the plant chemistry or certain areas of that plant chemistry and we're looking at those compounds and we're making medicine and assuming the presence of those compounds, then we want those compounds to be there, right? We can't really talk about um, the, the therapeutic effects of that specific compound if it's not in the thing. And turmeric is not gonna be in a fire cider. And how would you think you can tell, looking at this, right? So it's orange, right? And turmeric is orange, but so is apple cider vinegar. And that's the base of it. 
And if we look at turmeric in a tincture form, in a high alcohol tincture, this is an, uh, an extract of 75% alcohol, 25% water. This is what turmeric looks like when it's extracted in a form where it really wants to be kind of present, right? If you're looking for the presence of curcuminoids, These are the cur curcumin-based compounds that are found in turmeric. They're said to, to provide a lot of the therapeutic effects in terms of regulation of inflammation and liver support, digestive support, stimulation of, of healing, protection against cancer. A lot of the therapeutic effects of turmeric come from the presence of curcuminoids. It is also important to note that there have been clinical studies on turmeric extracts where curcuminoids have been removed so there are zero curcuminoids in these, and there was still therapeutic effects. So we don't want to limit our understanding of turmeric to turmeric equals curcuminoids, right? It doesn't. The chemistry is more complex, but also curcuminoids are really, really important in the, in the chemistry of turmeric. And we can assess for the presence of, of curcuminoids using organoleptic testing, using the, uh, the, the, our organs of sense, right, to see. We don't use, need to do a high-performance liquid chromatography test on this. We can look at it and say, you know, I see that neon yellow color. Let me pass this around to you so you can see. There's that neon yellow color. That is, um, that has curcuminoids in it. And if I'm going to be using that for medicine, I'm going to be getting, com compare it with this. It's not there. It is not there. So, lots of people are making fire cider with turmeric, and so did I, by the way, right? Both of these have uh, turmeric in them. Sorry. And let me... Uh, catch up with uh, folks. Oh, sorry, lots of uh, minerals. You're winning refrigerator, not room temp. Um, so I keep it at room temp for a while, but I do like to put it in the refrigerator, especially since I use, for mine, I use a lot of vegetables in my, um, in my fire cider. And the vegetables I'm using being fresh vegetables are going to release a lot of moisture into the fire cider and that raises the pH, it drops the acidity. Those are two different ways of saying the same thing. And so I just want to be, it's not that the acidity is not going to be the same because we have dilution from the water that's coming out from the fresh plants. That is one of the benefits of using dried plant material for this. Um, and so I use, I put it in the fridge because with, with because I'm mostly, um, I'm using it for this part that I'm going to show you right now. Um, and so I just use a lot of veggies in there. You do not have to keep it refrigerated if number one, you are going to extract it pretty quickly. Number two, your veggies are in a better ratio of mine. You have a, a higher amount of, of uh, vinegar. Um, um, and number three, you're not leaving around for four months. So mine was around for a long time. So I just, I checked in the fridge, but no, for a long time, it was just at the at room temperature. And then I threw it in there. Uh, I, heard, I heard if you're on blood thinners, you have to avoid turmeric. Well, you know what, um, blood thinners, Ginger and garlic are very strong blood thinners as well. In fact, I would venture to say that they would be more of a concern with the use of blood thinners than turmeric would be only because of the volume of garlic and ginger that we eat, right? But also, there's a lot of cultures that eat a lot of garlic and ginger. It's a daily part of their diets, a large amount every single day. And we don't see studies on those cultures bleeding out on the surgery table because they had some garlic in their pasta before they went, to, uh, before they went into emergency <laughs> surgery, right? We just don't hear that. And so you definitely want to be cautious about using blood thinners because there's a lot of plant chemistry that changes the clotting factors in the blood. And a lot of them are thinners and a lot of them increase clotting. Um, the old 
I'm going to get off track here, but this is just important to say, um, the old dietary recommendations for people who are on blood thinners used to be what, do you know? Primary dietary recommendation, don't eat greens. No greens, because green foods contain vitamin K, and vitamin K is involved in blood clotting. And if you're trying to reduce clotting factors in the blood, then don't eat greens is in a reductionist mindset, right? Which we don't want to be. I mean, it's a stupid thing to tell someone, right? Someone who's just recovered from, from, um, from heart disease, you're telling them don't eat green vegetables? It's a ludicrous thing to say. But that, that was the primary dietary recommendation that people with, with, who are on blood thinners were, were given. Now we know that's a, a stupid thing. We don't do that anymore. Some doctors will. There are doctors out there still. There's our car, there are cardiologists all out there right now, guaranteed, who are telling people don't eat veggies. Um, so yes, lots of plants, blood thinners, interact with a lot of different plants. But also if you eat those plants every single day, then you can modify the dosage of your blood thinner to the presence of those foods in your diet and not the other way around, which is how it should be. So. Um, I've used turmeric powder before and shaken the particulate in just so we can ingest a lot that way. Exactly, um, Acadian Homestead, another five points to you because then what you're doing is you're ingesting the whole root, right? You're not dealing with issues of solubility of constituents because you don't care because you're eating the whole thing. That's what we're going to look at today. Um, if you wanted to be extra safe, could you keep in fridge the whole time or would an extra extract well? Totally you could, absolutely you could, yep. Um, and how would you be able to tell if it extracted well while it was in the fridge? You could taste it. And if you taste vinegar and garlic and ginger and horseradish and all of that, then yes, it's extracted well. But you won't be able to taste the turmeric in there because the turmeric doesn't longer, extract. Uh, to extract in the fridge or would it be the same? It extracts pretty well in there because the, the compounds that we're pulling out, the, the volatile uh, compounds and the, some of the pungent principles, um, the minerals, if they're going to be in there. Um, if you wanted to speed it up, you could certainly heat up the vinegar and pour hot vinegar on initially and get some heat there. Um, you always want to be careful working with hot vinegar if you've never done that before. It's, it's very volatile and it'll sting your sinuses and your eyes and all of that. But it's a, a way of kind of getting a, a start on any kind of a vinegar uh, extraction. Yes. All right. I got to get to my concept here. So you make your you make your fire cider with your turmeric in it, and then you strain it out. And what you have is your fire cider. And this doesn't have the turmeric in it, but this does. And this is what most people are throwing out or composting. And I'm here to tell you that this is the reason to make fire cider is the mark. Mark, here's another vocab. The mark, M-A-R-C, is the leftover plant material whenever you're making medicine. So after you make a, a tincture or an infused oil or a tea or anything, the leftover plant material is the mark. And the mark still has a lot of the chemistry of the plant involved in it quite often. Sometimes if you've really used the best solvents, you've extracted everything, then what's left in the mark is just kind of a couple of, of stubborn things that have kind of clung to the plant material and a lot of fiber, right? Optimally, that's the, you know, the cellulose is the only thing that's gonna be left behind and we're just sucking everything out of there. But um, the more that you can taste and see the presence of chemistry in the mark, the more you know that um, you haven't extracted it all, it's not all in solution because you can see it in there. Right, so there's um, turmeric in here, and I can see that it's a deep, deep, deep orange color, right? It's deep orange. It's not been extracted. I knew that it wouldn't. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mark, the leftover plant material, and I'm gonna put it into a blender. The discussion about this is so much longer than the, the process. It's just so easy. Now, because you're gonna be using the mark, this does change the way that you set up your your, um, your fire cider making at the beginning because you're gonna be using the mark. You're not gonna be pressing it and throwing it uh, and, and composting it or throwing it away. So generally, um, if you're gonna be making fire cider, you're just crushing your garlic and throwing it in there and you're chopping up your ginger and throwing it in there, chopping up your horseradish. You don't care about the fibrous bits or the outer peel, the, the, the paper, you know, all of that. You don't care. 
but you're gonna care here because we're going to ingest this. We're gonna ingest all of this. Um, like Acadian Homestead, you know, if, we're, if you're ingesting it, then issues of solubility of constituents are out the window. Um, oh, I got nice big pieces of, this is cayenne pepper from Oshala Farm. They, they grew beautiful cayenne. Um, all right, so once you've pressed out your, um, your fire cider, you put your mark into a blender. I... Because turmeric is always boiled for about 45 minutes in India, and studies found that by doing that, you make turmeric more digestible and assimilate, assimilable, assimilable. Um, yeah, heat is one of the ways that we can modify solubility of stuff, right? Heat is a really good way. We can modify things by heat. We can modify by changing pH. We can modify by agitation. There's a lot of different ways to pull things in, but I don't know that it increases solubility, right? Hot water will make things come into solution just by virtue of heat just moves things, right? It makes things kind of come out of the medium, but... I wouldn't call that increasing solubility, which you didn't. I mean, you, you incre you increases the assimilation. All right, so we're gonna take that mark. This is seriously just the easiest thing. We're gonna take the mark, we're gonna put honey in, we're gonna blend it up, and that's what we're gonna do. And that's all, I could have made this in five minutes just by dumping this in here, but then you wouldn't know why I was doing it. Um, mm. and, uh, and we wouldn't get a discussion on chemistry, and it's a really important discussion on chemistry because a lot of people are assuming that their fire cider uh, has the benefits of turmeric and it doesn't not only that but it also doesn't have a lot of the benefits of the ginger because a lot of the potent anti-inflammatory effects from ginger come from the gingerols and the shogals that are in there those are oleoresins also i think every single class in the last three or four classes we've talked about solubility of oleoresins so here we are again with solubility of oleoresins they're big heavy sticky molecules and they don't like to come into solution so when we're working with ginger i mean we can make a water extract of ginger and we know that it's medicinal don't we right how do you know it's medicinal because you can smell it and you can taste it, absolutely. But there's a lot of chemistry that's left in the whole ginger. We can make a tincture that's going to be even stronger. We can make a, um, a, a number of different extracts and it's going to be even stronger. But if we ingest it, then we're getting it all. So, so yeah. Are you saying that so with turmeric and with ginger, they're, uh, well, at least with the turmeric, the curcuminoids, it only comes out in alcohol uh, extracts, but not in water? Uh, it's going to come out in non-polar solvents. So that means the further away from water you're going to get, the better that curcumin is going to come out. So it's not going to come out in water um, very well. Um, but it's going to come out very well in oil, right? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times turmeric, I like to treat it with oil. Oil and heat, okay. right? Heat um, uh, ghee and throw turmeric powder if you're working with dried turmeric. Uh, heat turmeric powder and ghee or coconut oil or you know another type of fat if you want it vegan um uh saute it for a little bit um and then put that into a container now you've applied heat and you've applied oil and now if you ingest that you've got you get a really mm -hmm. high absorption right because you've you've modified the absorption with the heat and then you've also given it a solvent an oil that it really likes but if you couldn't make a, a glyceride of turmeric right so a glyceride of turmeric wouldn't work either glycerin really only uh, extracts water soluble compounds so glycerin would be worthless vinegar really isn't very good water isn't very good but oil and alcohol are awesome mm -hmm. yes or just ingesting them all and not worrying about the solubility so i'm going to grind these up i've got the the mark left over from the plant material and i've covered it with some some honey how much honey however much you want if you don't want it very sweet then put a little bit of honey if you want a lot sweet put in a lot of honey um if you added honey to your original formula understand that there's some honey in there and maybe you want to bump it down but it's your recipe and uh, it's not going to go bad cover your ears i'm going to be blending ready on three one two three now i like to keep this pretty chunky so I'm making, again, this is sort of like a chutney, right? Where, um, I mean, it's not a true chutney, but the acidity and the fruitiness and everything um, is very, 
chutney like to me. And I mean, that's it. That's just all you're doing. You're just, you're just adding a little bit of honey in with the, um, with the mark. Now I left a little bit more um, of the fire cider in there than I generally do. So it's a little bit thinner than it generally is, but um, that's okay. We could. Yes. Well, you're gonna get everything. That's the thing, is that we're gonna get every single bit of all of the chemistry of all the plants is either gonna be in our fire cider or in the mark here. Well, I can't eat the mark though, so that's, I, I pick out like the things that I can eat. Uh-huh. That is in the garlic, I just- You just throw it with it. Yeah. So you might try, um, then yeah, if you can eat the, um, yeah, yeah, you're getting uh, much out of there. I really should have strained that a little bit better. It's thinner than I like, and I'm gonna blend it up a little bit more. Um, yeah, absolutely. You could also make exactly this just with turmeric. Ooh, here's an idea. Just make an oops all turmeric um, fire cider, and then um, just make it into a chutney, and then you have an oops all turmeric chutney that might be very good. I think it would be better tasting though with the ginger and the garlic and all of these. Yeah, this is just, it's happy making. Can't wait to. All right. There we go. The level of chunkiness is really up to you. So this is going to be spicy and sweet and sour and uh, bitter and all the things. It's just all the things. One of my favorite ways of eating this is with apple slices. So I brought apples in for you folks. You can skip me. I will skip you. <laughs> I'll have yours, Renee. You can, yeah. it smells delicious. I also have a little jar so you can take some home with you. So, um, so that's what you do. You have uh, the mark left over from your fire cider making, just throw it in a blender and add some uh, vinegar. And uh, Don't add some vinegar. I mean, you can add some vinegar. It's your stuff. You can do whatever you want. Add some honey. Or if you don't want to use honey, if you're vegan, then you can use, you know, agave or coconut nectar. Or... I think the date syrup wouldn't be good. Date syrup has recently become my favorite um, vegan sweetener. I love, if you've not tried oh, date syrup, <laughs> so yeah, the apples are just a really nice medium. Right? Oh, wow. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. I now, like how the different flavors hit you at different times. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You get that immediate pungency. You got the the sulfurous, the, the horseradish. Wonderful stuff that's going on. I mean, it's just. It's so good. Wow. So why make the fire cider? <laughs> well, yes. Um, just make the mark and take that. That's kind of what I'm saying here. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that's that's uh, exactly my point here. Why make the fire cider? I mean, because fire cider is wonderful. And there are people who can't... Um, who can't like this, or you know, there's textural stuff. Maybe people don't like the textural thing, right? Lots of different reasons, but she can make fire cider, but I'm with you, Andrea. I'm mostly, I make fire cider in order to have the mark left over. So what's the time for fire cider? People leave it for at least two or three A month. Months. A month is the minimum. Yeah. Um, there are, different schools of thought, and we've had this conversation before when it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. comes to um, like tinctures. I think most of the recommendations for extraction are longer than necessary. Um, and most of the, what you're looking for is pulled out, especially if you're applying some heat. 
or agitation or whatever, but we're working with a pretty strong solvent here. And what we want to have come into solution, especially if we've chopped it more finely and we're exposing more surface area, right? So there's a lot of different ways we can modify um, both our herbs and our, our solvent. But um, yeah, if you wanted it done quickly, I would say a week. If you chopped finely and then heated it, threw that on there, and then, you know, taste it and see. You can also just kind of pour off a little bit. You can absolutely do that. Just say, you know what? I'm not quite ready to extract you yet, but I just want a little bit. So I'm just gonna pour off a little bit and uh, take a little shot. That is very good. Mm. Mm. This has rosemary and thyme in it. So I'll give you a little shot of this one. So you can kind of taste what it tastes, tastes like with the rosemary and thyme in it because I do really like those aromatics. This is. You said you have a high um, content of vegetables. Are you just talking about garlic and onion or do you use other vegetables as well? No, the garlic and the onion and the uh, everything, the, and the, um, the horseradish oh, right. and the ginger okay. and the turmeric and all of that. I just, I'm mostly chopping up a lot of that because uh, this also and also has burdock root in it, so you can see the burdock up at the top. And with the burdock root also, I really like the burdock because that also modifies the pH a little bit. And then you're eating burdock and getting all of that, that chemistry of burdock as well. Um, how would you just make the mark? You would just basically cover it. So just chop up the veggies and then just cover by about an inch with the vinegar. You'd sort of be almost like pickling I wouldn't really call it pickling, but you sort of be like pickling the vegetables and then taking that pickle and then grinding it, right? And then you just have that happy little side effect of having that little bit of vinegar left over, but the vinegar wouldn't be the product, the veggies would be the product, but that's absolutely how you could do it. I dehydrated the mark, intending to mix with salt to make a seasoning, but haven't finished that yet. That's another one that I've wanted to do because I've heard of people doing that too. And that also sounds so wonderful. And again, you're using all of it, but you know, dehydrating it, eh, I would rather plus this. I wish you could try this because it really, really is good. Um, Love the little glass. Oh, aren't these fancy, Marcos? I know I got these for tincture tasting in class because, uh, because, you know, why not make it fancy? If we're gonna be tasting stuff, we might as well taste. So I got a dozen of these for my students. I know I love them too. Um, all righty. So uh, anyway, that's it. It was a really quick um, kind of class. There wasn't a whole lot to, to go through, but it's a really, really important co concept. And this also is sort of a larger concept that we kind of com have come back to a couple of different times in the last, classes, which is, um, you know, if you can ingest something, um, if you can eat the whole thing, the closer that you can get to eating the whole thing, the more you're, the, the more you're going to get of the chemistry of the plant, right? And also, this is kind of one of the root concepts that I try to reinforce in every single class. The more that you are able to kind of connect what you're seeing and what you're tasting, what you're feeling, and the mouthfeel and the, 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 the effects in your body, um, you already know so much of this. And you can already, you already knew that there wasn't much turmeric in here. I didn't have to tell you any of that. You could have figured that out for yourself. Um, we just need to learn how to trust what our senses are telling us and be able to interpret it correctly. And then we can apply that to medicine making. That is the science of medicine making that has been applied by humans for time immemorial. And it's really good science. There's newer language and processes that we associate with science nowadays, but organoleptic testing is still science. It is recognized by the FDA as a way of identifying plants via organoleptic testing. You know. Our senses, we, 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 we have value in our ability to, to, to taste and smell. We have incredible sense of smell and see and touch and feel um, the presence or the absence of the chemistry of plants. You already know that so much. And so a lot of what I'm doing is just kind of reminding you and linking things together and making patterns where maybe you haven't seen them before. But you all know so much of this. So anyway, Make a uh, make some mark, uh, Andrea. Make your make your mark and then uh, um, press it. Um, 
Yes, they are super fancy. Can you repeat the recipe? Yes, so then um, the recipe is garlic, ginger, horseradish, onions, cayenne. That's the basic recipe, Marcus. And then you can add in, you know, whatever, burdock and turmeric and rosemary and thyme and uh, um, go to town with it. I really love, um, Juliet Blankenspur from the, the um, Chestnut School did a, a lower heat one that used pomegranate and hibiscus. Right? And so number one was a beautiful ruby red color and you got a lot of the spice in this. She didn't do so much of the, like the, the garlic and onion, because that would be weird. Um, but I'm um, bringing those down and bringing those kind of tart acidic compounds. And then, you know, those anthocyanins and y'all know how I love me some anthocyanins. Um, it, uh, it's beautiful. And again, it's another way of kind of modifying it to make it a little bit gentler on the digestion for, for some people. And then you right. chop those up, put it in a jar, and fill it with... And you chop them up, and you put them in a jar, and you fill it with vinegar, exactly. Um, yep, um, approximately a one to two ratio. Could you just re-add the liquefied mark and honey back to the fire cider and make a fire cider smoothie and keep it in the fridge? Um, sure you could. It would fall down to the bottom, but you could just shake it up and take it anyway. Again, textural thing. Um, for some people who, who wouldn't like, you know, chunky <laughs> fire cider. <laughs> but you could market it as chunky fire cider. Um, yeah. Um, oh, Marcos, if you have the fire cider book, um, check out, um, um, oh, what's his name? It does um, uh, Herb Rally. Um, his name is very close to yours, Marcus, and so my brain keeps on telling me Marcus, and it's not Marcus. What's his name? He used to work for Mountain Rose. Who am I thinking of? Um, Mason. Mason Hutchinson. Mason Hutchinson does Herb Rally, and if you don't know about Herb Rally, you should know about Herb Rally because it's really wonderful. Mason has a recipe in the, the uh, book that is, yeah, <laughs> thank you, yes, Mason, um, that is a Tom Ka Gai fire cider recipe. So it has coconut milk and lemongrass and galangal root, right? So you get those kind of qualities of Tom Ka Gai, which is like one of my favorite things in the world. Can you just imagine a Tom Ka Gai fireside? So I haven't made that one yet, but uh, that's on my list of things to make because there's so many great recipes in that book. What is Herb Yeah, Rally? I know, totally. Herb Rally is uh, Mason's, um, um, oh God, labor of love. Uh, there's a Herb Rally podcast, there's a YouTube channel, there's a website. He just kind of makes herbalism information available to everyone. It's an incredibly generous and a wide-ranging um, uh, uh, set of sites to go to. So yeah, check out Herb Rally. There's so much stuff there. There is so much stuff there. Um, all righty. Um, oh, what are the benefits? So what are the benefits? The benefits are all of the benefits that come with ginger and garlic and horseradish and, and uh, turmeric and onion and all of those. So generally we tend to think about fire cider use for uh, respiratory support during um, cold and flu when there's damp, stagnant, mucus-filled um, um, lungs. Sulfur breaks mucus strands, makes, makes mucus much easier to, to, to break up. So anytime you ingest a lot of sulfur, that's going to be really helpful for that. Um, so, but, um, and then there's a lot of antimicrobial, antibacterial, anti, you know, anti effects from a lot of these herbs. But you can also look at it as um, most of those herbs have really positive effects on digestive processes, right? So as a just a general digestive warmer, it's a great thing. Um, and vinegar also can be very beneficial for some people with digestive problems if there isn't a low enough pH in the digestion. Using some vinegar is a really good way to drop down that pH and initiate digestive processes that sometimes are stunted because you don't have enough digestive acid. So... Using vinegar is often used that way, but you can use fire cider instead and get the other benefits that come with the use of the garlic and ginger and horseradish, etc. How would um, you know if your pH was too low in your stomach? 
stomach. Oh, um, so di good, really good diagnostic. If you're having digestive problems, if you're having you know bloating, um, heartburn, farting, all of that, um, take some apple cider vinegar or lemon and water or something and drink that. And see, in about 10 minutes, you'll either feel worse or you'll feel better. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you feel better, then, so the, the stomach, the pH in the stomach has to drop down for, yeah. you have a little sphincter, the pyloric sphincter right here that shuts to, to start the process. But if the digestive pH doesn't drop down enough, then that sphincter will stay open. It's going, where's the, where's the chemical signal that I need to shut down? So when you drop some vinegar in there, then that little sphincter goes, ah, I get it, you're digesting, and it'll sh shut down. So, and so, but the presence, the, the symptoms is, it, the symptoms are too much acid, right? Acid reflux coming up into the esophagus, it feels acidic because you have that refluxing or splashing back up of that acid. The cause of it is too little an amount of stomach acid and stopping that, right? So um, it is, uh, yes. Um, so then also a circulation, right? All of those are very, very good for heart function and general circulation. So immune function, respiratory function, digestive function, circulatory function. So if you right. get cold in your hands and feet, this is a good thing to Absolutely. And quite often you'll feel, you know, if you're a person who has you know, cold hands, feet all the time, it'll be like, wow, my, my hands are actually warm right now. And I'm my... feeling that right now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because garlic is one of the best things for enhancing microcirculation in the, in the peripheral um, capillaries. Exactly. It's really, really great for warming those up. So yes, absolutely. Um, did you, so there's the benefits. Uh, Tom Ka Fire Cider, yes. I noticed the Tom Ka Fire Cider. Is on, yeah, it's on Mountain Rose Herbs blog because Marcos used to work for Mountain Rose. He was their um, uh, education director. Um, yes. And yes, and they're also anti-inflammatory, exactly. So now that brings up the question of anti-inflammatory. They're also very heating, right? And so I don't want to go off on a, on a tangent. Uh, appears by Machen, Hudson Mountain Rose Herbs, and there you go, and Herbrow, Eugene, Oregon. There you go. Thank you, Marcus. Um, they are anti-inflammatory. They're also very heating to the body. And so some bodies experience inflammation from too much heat, too much dryness, and this type of a formula is not gonna feel good in their bodies. So even though it's anti-inflammatory, they are still ginger and garlic and horseradish and, and turmeric and all of that are still very, very heating and very drying. And so mm -hmm. for some people, yes, it's anti-inflammatory, and also this formula is in some bodies is going to feel really bad, like it's making inflammation worse, especially localized inflammation of the, the gastric tissues, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so it is anti-inflammatory and also sometimes you need to use different anti-inflammatories for different bodies because it is very heating. Um, but that's when you can make a completely different formula. You could use, make a vinegar extract of those, um, those uh, anthocyanins, do the, the hibiscus and pomegranate and, and uh, um, lemongrass and all of that. There. Can you add marshmallow in there? If you want to... No, because starches don't really like that low a pH. So the, the low pH is going to degrade some of the starches and it's not going to, it's not as bad as alcohol degrades it, but there's, they still don't like it very much. And so you're going to, it, it wouldn't last very long. It would, it would kind of settle to the bottom and you'd have this really gross kind of collection of all of that mucilage. Yeah. Imagine what it does when it's condensed down. It looks very much like snot. Oh. And so you have this mm -hmm. kind of layer of snot down the bottom <laughs> because it's going to not stay in solution. So it would be so good if you could. Yeah. Um, all righty, um, so there you go. Garlic makes me poo. Right, because it's warming. It's stimulating digestion, yes, absolutely. It makes you poo, it's, it's, moving, it's moving energy in the gut, right? It's also considered to be one of the big aphrodisiacs, right? It's moving energy in the, in the pelvic region. So in some people that's gonna mean poop, and in some people that's gonna mean, ooh, sexy time, right? And some people that's gonna mean better digestion. Um, and some people that's, you know, that's gonna be, kind of a lot of different things. All righty, so anyway, don't throw away your mark from your, from your fire cider. Um, use it, because especially use it if you're using turmeric in there because uh, that turmeric isn't in your 
in your fire cider because it's not a good solvent for it. All right, there you go. There's the class for today. I'm gonna pour y'all some, some of this if you wanna take some home. Um, you folks make some. Um, uh, oh, Mary, I'm, I've been an herbalist for 40 years and I am still learning too. We are all always still learning. Um, all righty, um, how often take it? Depends on why you're using it. So um, all of those systems that we were talking about, how it affects the body, you know, take it as needed. It's really easy to take it every single day, especially that mark. That will not, this is a type of food that I will not let, let rest. If this is in my refrigerator, I'm back for more until it's gone. You know, I can, there are certain things that I'll just kind of leave there. I don't care. I'll eat them. Yeah, sure. I like them. But uh, nah, this I'm going to go at. Because my favorite thing to do is get really sharp cheddar cheese, like um, Trader Joe's Unexpected Cheddar. So a layer of cheddar cheese and a little slice of apple and then that on top of it. And you can eat the whole mark from a whole batch of, of, of fire cider. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to let you folks go. I'll see you next. Um, I will see you next week. So no, Sandra, um, I do like to remove those skins. That's why for making of this recipe, when you're making your fire cider, you want to prep your veggies better to remove the skins, remove like the, the garlic skins and all of that, things that you don't want to eat. You're going to prep your veggies more carefully than you would generally because you're going to be using that mark. Yeah, absolutely. All right. See you all um, later. Bye. Try the old crock Australian cheddar. Ooh. That's on my list because now I've got a bunch of the, I've got a bunch of the chutney that I need to eat. So I will try that, Mary. Thank you so much. All right, I'll see you later. Bye bye.